Romans chapter 8 verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For to be carnally minded is death is a profound statement that delves into the heart of human existence and our spiritual priorities. Being, quote, carnally minded speaks to a mindset consumed by the flesh of our inherent sinful nature. A carnal mind is a mind that is dictated by the flesh. It is a mind that focuses on the here and now. It is a mind that does not take into consideration God's word and God's command. And the world we live in is full of people with carnal minds. They live each and every day for themselves. They live their lives to please themselves and not God. A carnal mind does not merely allude to physical or sexual desires, but it digs deeper, highlighting a mentality anchored in worldly values. These worldly values often manifest as materialism, the relentless pursuit of sinful pleasures at the expense of moral integrity, and the prioritization of fleeting pleasures over lasting virtues. This mindset also breeds self-centeredness, a pervasive focus on one's own needs, desires, and ambitions neglecting those of others. Such self-absorption not only strains interpersonal relationships, but is also a leading factor in marital breakdowns, causing divorces due to an inability to compromise or consider the well-being of a spouse. This is one of the major problems in our society. People have a carnal mind and they are worshiping at the altar of self. They are their own God. They are, they are their own savior. They are self-centered. They are narcissistic. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is horrible. This is one of the major reasons divorces are on the rise. As narcissism is on the rise, take your eyes off yourself and your sinful desires and place them on God rather than focusing on yourself. Focus on your family. Focus on your children. Focus on your spouse. A carnal mind is why people commit adultery. Several studies and surveys have tried to quantify infidelity rates with estimates generally ranging between 20% and 25%. For married men and women, that means one in four married couples cheat. A carnal mind will lead a man or woman to risk their marriage for fleeting pleasure. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doth it destroyeth his own soul. The carnal mind. Have you ever seen the sorrow of a man or a woman who has destroyed their marriage because of adultery? It is a heartbreaking thing to witness. It is the carnal mind. What is holding you back today is the carnal mind. To be carnally minded is to oppose God's design and desires for humanity. When Paul refers to death in this context, he isn't just addressing the inevitable physical end we will all face but underscores a far greater concern spiritual death. This is a harrowing separation from God, a chasm that distances one from the rejuvenating life and the transformative rebirth that stems from an intimate relationship with the divine. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Being spiritually minded entails a conscious alignment of one's thoughts and actions with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It signifies a deep-rooted commitment to living in sync with God's desires and principles. This is when you begin to love what God loves and hate what God hates. This alignment isn't just about the mysterious or heavenly aspects of spirituality. It is deeply entrenched in our everyday actions, decisions, and interactions. In simple terms, your life is ordered by the Bible. Your actions are ordered by the Word of God. Your thoughts are ordered by the Word of God. Your speech and the words you speak are inspired by the very Word of God. Being spiritually minded means that your mind no longer dwells on the cares of this world for being spiritually minded. You understand the fleeting nature of the world we currently live in. You truly grasp the brevity of this life we are living and the fragility of human existence. You recognize that you are not on this earth by accident or mere chance. An intelligent being created you. Therefore, if an intelligent being created you, it only makes sense to follow the commands of your maker. You understand that you have a maker, a creator, who will, will one day judge you for your actions and every one of your thoughts. When an individual is spiritually minded, their approach to life transcends mere rituals or religious acts. Their approach to life transcends mere daily routines. Their eyes actively shift off this world and all the cares of this world. Unfortunately, a lot of the churches today are carnally minded. They are focused on this world. They are focused on the here and now and not eternity. So many churches are seeker friendly. They are only concerned with getting people into their church and not heaven. Your church should be pointing you to eternal life. Your church should be pointing to Christ and to eternal things. A spiritually minded person is looking for eternal things. This is one thing Satan wants the churches of today to be. He wants them to be carnally minded. He wants the Christians of today to be carnally minded and not spiritually minded. For if you are a spiritually minded person, you are a changed person, a transformed individual. A spiritually minded person is transformed in many ways. And one of the ways in which they are transformed is through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that you only have the Holy Spirit. 
if you can do some great and mighty thing that is visible for the masses to see. However, the Bible gives us clear evidence of what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are in an individual's life. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. A spiritually-minded person is a transformed individual. It becomes a genuine reflection of God's teaching and principles in the practical world. Such individuals are driven by love, showing compassion and mercy in their interactions, seeking justice in their dealings, and consistently striving for righteousness. Righteousness and holiness are a priority in their life. They live an intentional life, or to live a holy life, you have to live in a life, you have to live an intentional life. They see beyond the temporal and material, recognizing the larger divine plan and purpose. Their eyes are on eternity, their focus is on the endless ages they will spend with their Lord. They live each day as a testament to their faith, making choices that resonate with spiritual wisdom and understanding, thereby illuminating the path for others to follow. Beloved believers, if ever there was a time for us to embody the fullness of what it means to be a spiritually minded Christian, that time is now for it is written for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is not a mere religious claim, nor is it about wearing a mask of holiness. It is a call to genuine transformation, a call to walk as Christ walked. It is the heartbeat of a soul that has truly encountered God and decided to be changed by him. To be spiritually minded means to refuse the trappings of hypocrisy. It means to denounce a double life where one's confession on Sunday does not align with the actions of the week. It is a grave error and one which our Savior repeatedly warned against to claim the name of Christ and yet walk in the ways of the world. The duality of such a life may fool many, but it cannot fool the one who searches the heart and tests the mind. This form of godliness denies its power and becomes a stumbling block to many who are genuinely seeking the truth. In a world teeming with distractions, it's easy to lose sight of eternity to become entangled in the fleeting pleasures of this age, to prioritize the material over the eternal. The allure of the carnal life is ever before us beckoning with its false promises and fleeting satisfactions, but we are called to a higher standard, a heavenly mindset, one that values the eternal over the temporal. Let us remember the profound truth that our lives here are but a vapor, and the real essence of our existence lies in the eternal. I implore you, beloved, the word of God be your guiding light. Let it order your steps, govern your speech, and transform your thinking. Refuse to be a believer who merely goes through the motions, who prioritizes rituals over a genuine relationship with the Father. The spiritually minded Christian understands that the essence of Christianity isn't about doing, but being, being transformed, being renewed, being like Christ. Such believers recognize their role in this world as ambassadors of Christ, sent to shine his light in dark places. However, let it be clear this call isn't about perfection, for we all fall short. But it's about a genuine heart that when it errs, runs back to the Father, seeking his forgiveness and grace. This journey of being spiritually minded is a continuous process, a daily laying down of our will and taking up the cross. It's about letting the Holy Spirit, not the flesh, lead in this age of superficiality where fake news and fake lives abound. May we be genuine believers who live authentically, who refuse to wear masks, who refuse to be lukewarm, who refuse to mix the sacred with the profane. May our lives in every facet echo the truths we profess, not out of obligation, but out of a deep-rooted love for the one who first loved us. Let's stand firm, dear believers. Let's be that city on a hill, that light that cannot be hidden. Let's refuse to be Christians who merely talk the talk, but walk the walk, illuminating the path of righteousness for all to see. Let the world see not us, but Christ in us. The hope of glory, the call to be spiritually minded is urgent and pressing. So let's rise to it, embracing the transformations it brings, living with an eternal perspective and being the genuine reflection of Christ's love to the world.